Red you button is down. You're on. Yeah. Um, as Kayvon mentioned, uh, I've been at Stanislaus County now for one month. In fact, it's today, one month. I, my first day is January 27th. But prior to that, I worked for uh, 17 years as the assistant general manager for the Modesto Irrigation District. Uh, and then uh, 11 years before that, I was uh, with the South Florida Water Management District in West Palm Beach. Um, so I've, I, my whole career has been involved with, with groundwater, and I'm, I'm really pleased to be here today, and thank you for inviting me. Um, I don't know if, Mr. Chair, if there's an appropriate time, judging by the uh, color of hair and lack thereof, if the group needs to take a break, I can just hit the highlights here. I would recommend that. hitting the highlights. I will hit the highlights. And, and a lot of it's already been repeated. I've got a ton of questions. I'm going to be calling these people over the next few days. But uh, I'm here representing Stanislaus County, and we've embarked on a, uh, I think of it as a multi-pronged approach. We're looking not just to solve a problem for today in response to the drought, but to really to lay a foundation for the future, for the next 50 years, the next few generations and beyond. And we're looking at it both in terms of a, a planning uh, implementation phase and also from a, a, a policy development. On the planning phase, uh, this map here just shows where Stanislaus County is. Um, there's a number of existing long-standing uh, irrigation districts, OID, MID, TID, Eastside, uh, Central California, West Stanislaus, a number of them, um, all different types of uh, water sources and issues. Um, I, I tried to capture that here with this table. Uh, all of the, there's nine cities in Stanislaus County. All of them, with the exception of Modesto, are 100 percent dependent on groundwater. Modesto gets about half of its annual water supply from this from MID through a treated surface water plant, um, water off the Tuolumne River. Um, agriculture is uh, provided uh, the bulk of that surface water through uh, reservoirs um, on the east side of the county. Uh, we're blessed with having storage reservoirs for surface water. Um, uh, OID and South San Joaquin, both on, on the Stanislaus River, have contracts with the Bureau of Reclamation. Uh, uniquely, MID and TID on the Tuolumne River have uh, sole ownership of uh, New Don Pedro. Um, so in most years, we're well served. Um, but in drought, just like anywhere else in the state, we turn to groundwater as our, as our uh, drier bank. Um, any of the domestic supplies out in the uh, you know, non-jurisdiction county area are 100 percent dependent on groundwater, as is a, a lot of private ag. So we have a, a lot of mixed use. Groundwater is a, is a is, is a big deal in our county. Um, there have been a number of wells that have gone in out on the east side. Let me back up to this map, and you see where the blank spots are on the map. That's that's one area where I'm focusing. I'm not focusing so much on where the existing public agencies are or where the city footprints are, but really out there in that unincorporated uh, jurisdictional county area where we have a lot of private wells going in, especially in particular on the east side up in the foothills where the aquifer begins to, to pinch out up against the bedrock, up against the Sierra Nevada foothills. That's what the lawsuit that's been filed to force the Board of Supervisors to withdraw the well permits well, for that, about that area? That's, that's, that's right, Mr. Eisenberg, exactly right. Uh, there's been a number of uh, concerned landowners out in that part of the county that have filed a lawsuit um, asking for basically an estoppel for the county to issue a moratorium. Um, that is still pending. I, I'm really not here to speak on that. Uh, I can't. Um, but we are in the midst of, of that litigation. As I'm looking at this and trying to gather data, and, and fundamentally this is an information gathering exercise, at least initially to, to educate us to what we, what we know, what we have, uh, to find out what we don't know and find out what we don't have in order to find out methods to, to go acquire that. And what I'm finding, I call them silos, and, and this, is, this probably isn't new to any of you gentlemen, but there are silos of information out there in the community, whether they're in public uh, hands or out in private sources that are hard to get to. And there are institutional barriers. Um, there are confidentiality, uh, uh, protection, uh, call it intellectual property, law, I don't know what it is, but, but the, the, the private people were really, really hesitant to share their information. I'm going to try to break that. Uh, I don't know how, but I'm going to find a way. And, and we're getting good public involvement um, in terms of sharing of resources. Uh, the other thing we need to do is make sure that we understand as we share that information that we're all talking the same language. Oftentimes, 
Uh, the urban water suppliers speak in totally different terms than ag suppliers. <laughs> you're going to talk an MGD over here in gallons per minute. You're going to talk an acre feet per day. You're going to talk in cubic feet per second. Those are all water units, and they all, you know, translate. But we need to kind of standardize the language so that we can all talk to one another and make sure that we're not just, you know, uh, passing each other uh, because we don't understand the terminology. Um, what I have found as well, not only are these, these information silos out there, but each and every one of these entities also have their kind of own standing cookie-cutter urban water management plan or ag water management plan or groundwater management plan. And what I want to do is take all of those and synthesize them into one countywide water plan. And that includes the blank spots on the maps. And so for me right now, the, the, as the newly hired water resource manager for the county, is just trying to synthesize, organize, compile, collate, gather all these data in, into one common database, into one place. Um, I'm, I'm asking for a lot of different help um, in different uh, areas. The UC County Extension, uh, the UC Cooperative Extension is on the campus there uh, where the Ag Center is. Um, they have offered some of their geographic uh, department up at UC Davis to do some of the mapping for me, which is fantastic. Um, because because really, and I'll get to it here in a little bit, um, uh, you know, understanding, as, as these other presenters have, have said, you know, just getting the data together before you can really begin to understand what you have and what you don't have is, 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 is so important. Uh, it took about four years, and I was on the MID side of it at the time, for the county to develop what's called a groundwater mining and export prevention ordinance. And it all came about um, about four years ago. There was a, a farming entity out on the west side that was pumping groundwater uh, 24 hours a day, moving it up into the Delta Mendota, sending it south to Fresno County and pulling out a like amount of water to irrigate crops that he had down there. They were getting a limited surface water allocation from the CVP. I thought it sounded like a pretty good idea. But at the time, uh, a lot of people, big reaction, geez, what happens? What if, you know, L.A. comes up here and, perforates our county with wells and sucks us dry. Um, so this ordinance got started, and, and eventually they adopted it uh, last October. The county board of soups did. But it, it changed as we got into the discussion, and, and, it, and I think for in a significant way. And it, it, rather than just export prevention subject to a permit, you know, kind of little r regulatory program, we actually started looking internally and saying what happens even with our, in our own county if there's unreasonable use going on or over-exploitation or harm being caused um, either to the aquifer itself, to the resource, or to other existing legal users. So this ordinance now has moved beyond just a, an export uh, prevention ordinance, but it's also looking inward at maybe a self-regulating um, uh, regulatory oversight type of a program. We really are going to have to struggle with this in, in terms of how we define what we call mining right now. The ordinance and its existing construct is it, it's just not going to work. And I'm afraid we're going to be subject to, you know, uh, legal uh, challenge. So, so we've got some work to do in terms of how we go forward with, with implementing that particular program. Um, the Water Advisory Committee was also established by the county. Uh, this is uh, uh, board appointed. It's a very wide community cross-section. We've got businessmen, we've got city councilmen, we've got mayors, we've got uh, building industry developers, we've got well drillers, we've got pump installers, we've got land, uh, agricultural uh, landowners, um, irrigation districts. We've got the gamut. And at face value, you'd say, geez, every one of you are in conflict. And, yeah, if you kind of wanted to go there, but really we need – all those voices to be at the table, I think it really brings a, and will allow for a really healthy discussion. Very open. Uh, these are all subject to Brown Act. Um, uh, noticing the County Board of Supervisors has put us under a mandate to come back to them within 100 days and give them a report. Uh, they want action. This wasn't created for political cover. They want to see us achieve something and, and, and do it in an open um, public manner. Uh, as I said, the first meeting was just yesterday. Uh, coming out of that, um, not only have we, uh, well, the most significant thing coming out of the first meeting was um, we're not going to meet monthly, we're going to meet every two weeks. So we've, we've 
we've doubled up the frequency, and then we've also um, kicked this mission statement out along with um, some, some key uh, steps for success. And the mission statement uh, is planned to be adopted at the, at the next um, meeting of the, of the Water Advisory Committee. But I wanted to try to give everybody focus, you know, to evaluate the status of the groundwater resources of Stanislaus County in order to identify and develop programs and practices that ensure a reliable and sustainable groundwater supply for the benefit of its citizens, present and future, and to make recommendations to the County Board of Supervisors to adopt, to adopt public policy that empowers such identified actions. So the focus is on the groundwater, because believe me, it, all of you gentlemen know you've been around this issue for long enough you get into a room with a room full of people and you start talking about water and pretty soon you're talking the full spectrum because it's such a fun subject. I mean, it's fascinating and everybody has intimate knowledge. So we, we really are trying to focus ourselves to this groundwater issue, looking at the present issue, situation with the drought and then also looking to build this longer term, longer lasting program. Um, there's a sidearm to the WAC and that's called the TAC. It's a 10-member technical advisory committee. This is the science arm. So they're sitting out there, too. So they're representatives in the community that will be the research and the planners and the data gatherers that will compile the information, put it into an understandable format, report back to the WAC. The WAC will then give assignments to the TAC, and then I'm the chair of the TAC as well. Um, I think if we come out of this with these core, these four elements, we'll have one heck of a program. First of all is, is mapping all of the wells. We, even in this day and age, do not know where in a GIS-based geographic information system where all the wells are located. So we need to map the wells. Recognizing that there's private uh, protection in terms of what information you can publicly disclose, but for most of the groundwater models, even if you get as tight as a, a quarter mile of discretization, you're not giving away any private information as to what the precise location of any well is within that grid. So I think we're okay there. And we need to standardize how we report the measuring point elevations of the wells from which you measure depth to water. That measuring point elevation is critical because if you measure depth to water, you really want to convert it into an elevation above some common datum. And we all need to start talking about what is that common datum. And I think, Mary, that through the CASGEM program, that's been fairly well established you know, as to what uh, NGVD, NAVD, whatever it is that we're reporting. Um, so mapping the wells, where are they located for each well? How deep is it? How shallow is it? Is it in the unconfined aquifer? Is it in the confined aquifer? Is it completed across multiple zones? How was it constructed? <coughs> um, we need pumpage data. The most critical piece of information in any groundwater management program is knowing how much is being pumped. And it's the least known variable in every study that I've ever seen. We need to get pumping data, whether those are meters, and that gets everybody backing up because they're expensive and they're difficult to maintain, or whether it means just simply taking capacity of the pump and multiplying by run hours. That's close enough. That's good enough. It's a lot better than having nothing. And oftentimes when we do these studies, you don't have anything. And you have to make all sorts of inferences, assumptions, and back into a number. So pumpage data is absolutely critical. And then, as Mary said, tying all of that into what is the response of the aquifer system to those stresses. Where those stresses are located geographically within the, within the basin, how deep those stresses are occurring, what that stress is in terms of pumpage, and then what the water level response is. If, if we come out of that with, with a, a program built around those core elements, uh, I think it will be longstanding. We also have, um, over the last 10 years at the local level, spent about a million bucks developing a groundwater model with the United States Geological Survey, a MODFO model that's, that's, that's been calibrated. Steve Phillips um, has been working on that with us through our local groundwater um, associations. Um, uh, it's, it's called ModFlow. Uh, significantly what it does is it provides us with a crystal ball. You can take a model such as this and, and ask of it, uh, what happens if you do this to the basin and you perturb it like this? What's the general response to the aquifer system? So you can do long-term planning. You can actually manage your well fills. You could manage 
Uh, you could use it as a prospecting tool for where you might drill new wells or, more importantly, where it isn't a good idea to drill a new well because it may have some adverse impact either to another le legal user, to a, a surface water system, to contaminant movement, to whatever criteria and constraints that you would impose on top of the model. Uh, that model is expected to become, uh, after its peer review, to become public record um, later this fall. Board of Soups, as I um, mentioned, are really, uh, we've got full political will. Uh, you know, if anything good comes out of a drought, it's awareness. I mean, the opportunity is now. We've got, it resonates with the public. We, we, we've got momentum. And so they want us to come back with a 100-day action plan this June, uh, to come back with a longer-term vision next January, to constantly keep them informed on our progress, uh, to change our course, to give us guidance on new steps. Uh, we'll be going back to them with making recommendations for, uh, you know, for their consideration in terms of action in, in, in the form of public policy. That's it. Thank you all.